welcome to everyone who's joining here for the working remotely or remotely working webinar. Uh, we are, we'll give another 30 seconds or so. I see um, people still coming in and I don't want them to miss anything exciting or useful. My name is Jonathan Reynolds and uh, we decided to put these uh, series of webinars on at the beginning or a few weeks back um, as things were starting to unravel on this global crisis and thought, well, what can we do to actually help? What can we do to um, be of use to people at this time? As a talent strategy company, our mission and goal has always been to equip companies and help companies to make the best attraction, hiring, engagement and development decisions to meet their people and performance objectives. But uh, these webinar series are really just from a, a heartbeat of wanting to be a service and be a support to people as they're going through these tough times. So last week we put on a, a webinar around managing a remote workforce. So for leaders and managers, and uh, we had about 650 people register for this webinar. And a lot of those individuals are sitting in individual seats saying, well, yeah, I'm also a manager, but I'm also an employee trying to figure out this stuff on my own as well. So uh, we agreed to do another webinar at people's request uh, around some of the tips and tricks, things we've learned over the last eight plus years being 100% remote or a mobile company. So um, I am uh, welcoming right now Tiffany with us and Jeff Boucher. Um, notice I just skipped over Tiffany's last name. It's easier just to say Tiffany than trying to slaughter the last name uh, and myself as well, Jonathan Reynolds. So we're all a part of Titus Talent Strategies, which is a, um, a national uh, firm, which is uh, helping companies with their people, uh, which I've already mentioned here. And we chose eight years ago to be 100% remote or mobile. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, as we uh, fly on through these slides here, just cover the agenda. So first one is we want to talk about knowing yourself or know thyself, um, workspace, uh, producing results and tools and tips. So that's our agenda. We're gonna go super fast in here um, and it's gonna be interactive. But 2012, I got hold of this book called Working Without Pants. Um, so we, we transitioned to, or the year without pants, let me say it right. We transitioned to this 100% work, remote workforce. This is a helpful book. Um, I don't read books from cover to cover. The title alone said it all for me, uh, which the concept is you don't know if either of us sitting here presenting are wearing any pants, um, and I will not prove it. Uh, so we'll just leave that one out there. But uh, it is interactive, so please do, in the, in the, you'll see if you kind of wave your uh, cursor over the Zoom screen, you'll pop up the little Q&A box at the bottom. For those of you who are used to watching and using Zoom in the last few weeks, as many people are, uh, there's not only a chat button, there's a Q&A button. So write your questions in here. We'll try and get to them as we go along. Um, if you just want to say, stop, I got a question about that, we will do our best to pause and answer questions. So um, appreciate that. One of our big concerns going in here was this video. Um, and I'll just let it press, kind of play in the background as I talk a little bit. But, oh, it didn't play. Oh, no. Um, Oh, there we go, okay. Uh, you've probably seen this classic video. It had a big resurgence and a resurface recently with this whole everybody working remotely. But the whole concept here is uh, what was going on. This news reporter from the BBC suddenly had this uh, traumatic, traumatic event where he's on this new live news channel and his kids start coming in and it's just hilarious. And now we were used to laugh at it and now we're all relating to it as we deal with all of the drama of having um, our new co-workers being, <laughs> being these uh, animals and kids and people who are trying to help us survive and run businesses, et cetera. But, all righty, so uh, there are so many fun, fun, fun memes going out there. You've seen the hashtag poor Jennifer with the, the woman decided she would carry her laptop with her to the bathroom unbeknownst to her that her video was on and this traumatic thing. I, I do hope it was a, a joke or somebody uh, adopted that one. But the big thing there is uh, she must have had some terrible co-workers to actually record that and stick it on YouTube. And I hope for, hope for your co-workers in this time are not that awful. But before I just get into a little more interaction here and welcome these two wonderful people, Jeff, and Tiffany to start sharing some stories and things that they've learned. 
the big thing I want to say is this. In change, in transition, in uh, crisis, it's important to um, be gracious with yourself and gracious with one another. So part of you knowing yourself is to be aware that you're going through change and transition and to be aware of your coworkers and being super, super gracious with them. Probably your leaders have never, I won't say that horrible phrase, we're in unprecedented times. Okay, I just did. But we are in unprecedented times, meaning we've never been here before. Be gracious with your leaders. Be gracious with your coworkers. They're still trying to figure out what it means to work from home and deal with all of the crisis. So, ah, oh, tag, tag over here. Who, who wants to talk a little bit about this, about uh, productive and engaged and what works best for you knowing yourself? Yeah, Jonathan, I'll, I'll step in here. When, when we're talking about the first, the first part of this and knowing thyself, you know, you need to determine what makes you comfortable and what works best for you. For me, I'm a total rhythm routine guy, creature of habit, crave routine. I, I start myself at my work day at the same time every day. I end at the same time time every day. It really helps develop my, my mindset for productivity. I get up, I shower. When I decide to shower, I shower at the same time. And when I decide to make an excuse for not working out, I make that ex excuse at the exact same time. For me, when I'm not on video calls, I even have a, a phone call rhythm where I pace around the exact same footprint of my house. Uh, it, it all just boils down to me being comfortable. And that's what translates to me being productive. And just when you think you have things figured out, daycares close and you get shelter in place. And all of a sudden your house is filled with your wife doing the same thing, working from home. Uh, we actually just uh, introduced two foster children two weeks before the shelter in place. So our house went from a well-oiled machine down to um, uh, a bit of managed chaos. Uh, and so we're both developing, my wife and I both developing our new normal. And for me, developing that new normal is I wanted to take the things, my routines, and translate those over to the, to the new So what my wife and I are doing is we're really developing time blocks to, to help stay productive. We kind of have a, a, a morning meeting to where she develops her most important calls and I develop my most important calls. And we tag in and we tag out down to our basement war room is what we call it that has like six or seven different monitors on it. Um, through all this communicate your rhythm both up and down so communicate it back up to uh to your management and down to people kind of reporting into you um la lastly jonathan you know when i first started working from home i would see these articles that were that would kind of tell you to keep work work and keep your home life home life and while a lot of that is true one tip that really worked for me is i allow myself the grace to do some work from home things some tasks some chores if I have a, uh, a call end early, uh, I'll actually go fold a load of laundry or load the dishwasher. Because for me, being most productive is having things done around the house, um, figuring out what works for you. Uh, Tiffany has some ideas for maybe individuals that have less routine or crave less routine. So Tiffany, I'll, I'll toss it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. So I am the total opposite of Jeff, and I feel like I've had a two-year head start among everyone going through this transition right now, starting with Titus in a mobile environment in 2018. But I do remember the switch, and at first I was very much a routine person and would try to get up at the same time every day, and I just found myself being glued to my computer and just having way too much screen time. So I've really adapted my style to be much more fluid. And so if my first call isn't until nine, there are quite often times, and Jonathan, close your ears, but I get up at 8.55 because that's just who I am as a person and it's what worked for me. Um, the one thing that I do that is structured is I always block off a one hour lunch. And it could be at 10.30, it could be at 1.30, just kind of depending on my day. But I'll spend that hour, obviously, you know, eating lunch, but I might take my dog out for a walk or I might um, put laundry, like Jeff said, and um, things like that. So I definitely allow myself that one hour of me time. I also listen to my body throughout the day as well. So if I just feel like my back is hurting or, you know, I'm just getting super frustrated with what's going on, I'll walk away and I'll flip laundry, I'll grab a 
a drink out of the fridge, a snack, you know, something like that. Um, so I really do like to have that flexibility more than anything. Um, so yeah, hope that was helpful. Yeah, this is great. Um, I'll, um, some comments coming here. One of the things I'll just uh, touch on is um, this whole social distancing and inter distancing that's going on or isolation. We're hearing this all. It's, everyone needs to self-isolate and do the responsible thing. Uh, but we're as creative beings that are created for relationship, having that dynamic and understanding what you need. Now, some people say I'm, I'm more... Um, uh, outgoing and more you know more reserved and more of a uh, highly social person etc but knowing yourself and what you need as far as that goes as well uh, we highly recommend and uh, we'll touch a little bit later just being on video just turning on your video and getting on facetime skype for business or zoom having a conversation or whether it be a, a zoom happy hour or a video happy hour and a lot of people doing that socially even in their neighborhoods and their social circles to reconnect with old friends family members um, and grab a drink and grab a snack and meet together and have some time together. We do that in our, our work day as well from team meetings, but also today we have a team happy hour as well where people come together and just to connect. But know what you need and be aware of that. It's really, really important. Jonathan, you, you know, go ahead. No, Jonathan, I just wanted to step in here too because as we've talked and for those that may have been on our first webinar, I think it's really important uh, that you allow yourself to get personal in this kind of time of social yeah. distancing, um, ask questions, ask people how they're doing, uh, share personal stories of how you're getting through because uh, that, that's really important to your health. Um, and you know, we do this in meetings at our company level, we do it at team level and even on down to kind of our one-on-ones. Our -on we'll start those meetings, tell me something personal, tell me something that is positive throughout your week. Um, connect with your people and, and choose to be vulnerable. I, I just think that's so important. That. Yeah, uh, this a good lead in there just on one other dynamic. We do a lot of um, internally behavior assessments to understand one another's different themes so you can get to know one another on a deeper level. Um, I, just a freebie on this one. We'll have a little slide at the end where you can sort of connect for more information. But if you would love to see kind of your behavioral work style, We'll, I'll just share you our link and you can we'll automatically send you the report afterwards. I'll give you one or two page understanding your work style. Heck, you know, share it with a share it with a coworker. We can get into them as well and you can see how to work best together. But no cost to you, just, just a freebie if you'd like to know your behavior profile. All righty. Let's talk about workspace because this has been one of the, uh, I know that you guys are in the throes of this couple of weeks in and you're probably still navigating through um, what that looks like for you. There are so many different options here to try and establish that office at home with your new work co-workers, those little animals and children or children slash animals that, that seem to merge together at times. Um, I am now principal of a homeschool apparently. I didn't realize that. I'm head of IT as well and I get called into all kinds of things like that. No one respects me as the principal here but um, when I walk through the halls of my house I don't think uh, people see me as the principal but um, I'm usually just headed to the kitchen to grab another bite to eat, but, but uh, let's just tee this one up here. Talk about some of the office things that you've established that have been really helpful for you. Who wants to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. So I am much more flexible in my workspace as well. I'm very um, mobile. I like to get up and walk around. Um, I'm very um, small when it comes to what I need for my work. So I usually only use my laptop. I have a wireless mouse. I do have one of those cool Bluetooth things that I use for phone calls, <laughs> but um, I like to just be able to get up and move. You know, that's the biggest thing. And I know some people have their their monitors and um, things like that, but I use virtual sticky notes. So all my notes are on my computer. I use OneNote by Microsoft. So you can do different notebooks and things and take notes within a virtual notebook. So I can just move around. I sit at my kitchen counter if I'm hungry, like Jonathan said, or I moved to my new nursery, I'm nine months pregnant. So um, yeah, so we just kind of move around and, and trade spaces between me and my husband to try to get away from each other during the day. Um, so yeah, very much more of a, a mobile nomad. So. Yeah, and, and I can jump in here because to the contrary of Tiffany, as you might guess from the routine guy, I have an office. I have one space where I feel really comfortable and that's where I go to work all of the time. 
And, and so you heard me earlier talking about setting up the war room in the basement, but it doesn't look like I'm in a basement. I actually kicked the wife and the new kiddos out of the house. They're driving around the neighborhood right now, socially distance appropriate, but um, so that I could be here so I can kind of talk, uh, talk and be comfortable for uh, today's webinar. You know, one thing that did pop up as a result of all of this is I was down in the basement and I would hop on some video calls and I realized that while my Wi-Fi works very good where I traditionally do all of my meetings, it was not good uh, in the basement. So kind of a pro tip is figuring out the zones that you're allowing yourself to work in the home. Does your Wi-Fi work there? Uh, does, can your speed get, uh, get kept up? Um, one, one other thing, don't forget to consider noise levels, actually, when you're uh, figuring out what areas of the house that you can work in. Your new coworkers um, you know, may enjoy video games or playing loudly. Give that some consideration, actually, when, when you're deciding where to work. Um, for me, oh, oh gonna, gonna keep going, keep going. So, so for me, I live and die by my calendar. So I have it color coded. Again, no surprise there. And I think that really helps to, so that you can kind of figure out your day at a glance. I have about eight to 10 different color coding. Uh, so I can look every week, every day, almost down to every hour, what I have coming up, what type of work it is. Uh, you know, it, it kind of follows the theme of a traffic light. For me, red, anything red is kind of more administrative. It's not really moving the needle with the company or revenue. Um, yellow is management meetings, leading, uh, leading people. And green, uh, that's interacting with the customer. That's, that's revenue generating time. So it's really important and, and, and impactful to have an understanding of what your day, what, what your afternoon looks like, so you can know when, when you can pivot. And, and how to how to pivot. I hope that's helpful, Jonathan. Yeah, absolutely. I know Tiffany wants to talk about some of her kind of her noise preferences, but I'll just sort of throw on one side um, here, which is background. Um, if you suddenly you're in this world where you're now representing your company and you're sitting at home in a home office, you weren't hired to work at home. So you hired thinking you're going to be in an office and the environment, etc., cubicles, offices are all going to be set for you. Now suddenly you have this space. We have team members on our team at Titus who they, they, they don't have a home office set aside, so they're in a closet. Literally, they're in a clothes closet, a large walk-in closet, and they just made their background so it doesn't look like they're in going into Narnia. Um, but uh, they just chosen to kind of make their space there, but I think it's aware of what's in your background. Sometimes people got a nice a nice space. I have a nice space behind me. Uh, Tiffany's got a nice uh, nursery behind her. Jeff's clearly got some kind of home, home office space, but being aware of what's in the surrounding, um, simple things, are they appropriate? You represent your company well, um, etc. You know, move some of your personal knickknacks that may be um, less tasteful if that's what you have in your background um, around for you. But Tiffany, you want to talk about music, I think, right? Yeah, so actually Jeff reminded me of that when he was talking about something else. So, you know, I know a lot of people like to have their headphones in and kind of zone in. I'm much more of like a background noise kind of person. So my husband and I have actually been taking turns just having music on in the background on the TV or one of our speakers at a low volume so that it's not just silence all the time. I know some people at Titus also have like the news on in the background, which isn't super positive right now, but you know, or whatever you want to be watching in the background, Tiger King, um, <laughs> so as long as you're not distracted. But yeah, I mean, just allow yourself to have that and don't feel guilty about it in any way, because a lot of times it's really helpful just for production. Um, the other thing that I was reminded of, so my year old mother-in-law is now working from home for the first time in her life and she her house is not set up for it so she's sitting at the table and she's like my back is hurting and so just remember like you can grab a pillow from the couch or you know switch positions sit on the couch it's okay so I was also want to mention that as well that's great that's great one of the, another tip somebody on our team they put a little sign on their door like their office door um, or the, the space that they call their office, just a little sign saying, do not disturb. So their kids know I'm on a call, this is important or whatever. Uh, so you don't go in and kind of run into the rant of, everyone shut up and suddenly everyone's kind of on pins and needles. Just a nice a, a sign so they know what the system is, what to expect on that. Even on the front door of your house, I have a dog that goes nuts when the doorbell rings or somebody knocks at the door, just not always appropriate, but so just putting a little sign on the door or sticky notes saying on calls or something like that, that can help to manage your own stress 
Okay, let me talk about results. I think this is huge. One of the things that we realized when we shifted from to a remote, or we call it mobile workforce, I know we're not very mobile right now, everyone has to be locked indoors, but um, producing results is really important. So there are expectations upon you when you were hired. Maybe the expectations that you would show up at eight o'clock in the morning, you'd leave, leave work at five o'clock at night. Maybe the expectations where you would produce a certain amount of results and get a report in, or maybe there was an expectation of you hitting some kind of a quota or, or target. But I would make sure that you talk things through with your leaders and managers and bosses about those expectations and be very, very clear about those and stick to those as much as possible because out of sight can be an out of mind. And so if you don't have a system set up and your company's not used to the reporting structure, you have to create almost that to, to let everybody know what you're doing, not just from an activity, but you're hitting the results and expectations that you're going above and beyond in this time. We, we are in these very surreal times, but I think over communication, we see that nationally, there's over communication, but we see it from our, us as individuals as well, what we can do to communicate what we're doing. Uh, I'll just sort of, Pass this to Tiffany. Tiffany, you want to talk about this? Yeah, for sure. So um, this kind of goes along with what I was saying earlier about when I start my day and things like that. You know, you know your boss from working with them for however long, and you know what it's like to be able to walk by their desk or by their office. Um, but you don't, you can't actually assume what they're looking for out of you. So I think it would be really important to have an open and honest communication or conversation with your manager to say, hey. What's important to you? What does productivity mean to you? Do you want to see my light on our Skype or our communication software green from eight to five? Is that what you want to see and have me do results during the day? Or considering I have kids at home to homeschool, what do you think about an eight to two? And then I log on again after dinner once the kids are playing or you know in bed and I can finish up then. Like what makes the most sense for us? What makes the most sense for you? And how are you going to receive my results and how am I gonna get them to you? So I think it's just important to not make any assumptions and to be stressed that you can't be constantly at your computer from eight to five and you know have that that dialogue with your boss. Yeah, I think equally as important is allowing yourself to smile and to laugh. Uh, I think there's stressful times right now. And if anything positive is coming out of this, it might just be the memes on the computer uh, and kind of sharing those. Uh, we'll kind of share some of our, our favorite tools for doing that later. Um, but you also need to be OK and comfortable stopping and powering down and walking away. Uh, you know, now, now isn't the time to kind of prove your worth by working extra and sending emails at midnight. Um, you know, you need to show that extra value all, all of the time and know that there are other people in your house with you that, that need your time and need you, you need you to be well as well. So learn when you need to learn when you need to work and learn when you need to shut down and walk away and kind of put those boundaries in place. Um, and, and for me, that's a lot easier when I have this physical office location, I can walk away. But um, when you work in different areas of the home, that can be a bit more challenging, right, Jonathan? Absolutely, absolutely. I think um, one of our, um, the Achilles heel of this, the ability for so many companies to go and work remote or mobile is because of technology. And then technology never leaves us. <clears throat> so, I mean, you can share some of the next slide here. I think we talk about technology and some of the tools we use, but. Um, I think it's uh, important to um, have technology be serve us and serve what we're doing, but not rule us. And so those boundaries, we live in a world which just demands our attention with notifications for everything. You download an app and it says, can we send you push not notifications? And we go, well, yeah, maybe. I don't want to miss out on something. And so suddenly there's just all of these apps bombarding us with notifications to grab our attention. And there you have people in your life who love you and you've made a choice to have a commitment to some, some kind of a relationship with their going, how do I send a notification to get your attention? Uh, well, that's what my wife says to me. But uh, so using technology to connect with others, here are a few things that we use, obviously instant messaging platforms, Microsoft Teams is great. Um, obviously there's just normal good old texting or fax messages, you could do that if you're really into that. Um, uh, the other is Zoom, we use Zoom here, uh, obviously you're using Zoom here today, uh, which is free, you can download that, and they're very affordable if you want the paid app. Um, the other one which we love is Ohana. Now, I understand that this call here is um, 
Well, I'll, I'll let Tiffany talk about Ohana, but the Ohana is a beautiful app that we use. And this is, if you would like an introduction to Ohana, they're offering a killer deal right now, just for those who are on this call and companies who, uh, who are on this webinar um, at uh, no cost through the end of June, I think it is. But um, Tiffany, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Ohana. And one thing that's important to me is that I'm very much a social media person. Most people are in this day and age. I love Snapchat. I love Instagram, but I do like to have certain boundaries with my coworkers. So I don't actually add anyone uh, from work on to Snapchat and things like that. But Ohana is basically the Instagram of the business world because you can share funny memes. You can shout out people. You can give high fives. Uh, post about birthdays, the whole thing. And it's just among your entire office or your entire team. So I, I love it and I'm a huge proponent of it. It's great. It's good stuff. So some of the, some of the questions here around just um, managing this technology component with companies who are not used to having platforms, maybe you'd use an, um, some kind of a, just the old fashioned water cooler talk for sharing stories or uh, going into the little the break room and there's a little piece of paper stuck on funny memes on the wall like they're concerned about technology i do want to just say that ohana is a very safe version of facebook where it's all admi nicely administrated uh, and administered and nice boundaries put in place which i, I love it for that reason um and uh, i think it's you know tiffany's point i don't know what she's doing on snapchat but she won't let anyone else see it from the company but uh all righty. So thank you so much to Tiffany and Jeff for sharing here. Now, here's the next thing. If you want more information, if you have specific questions, you want to ping Tiffany, you want to ping Jeff or myself or any of our team members, we would happily give you, a, give you a piece of our time here just as our way of giving back. So if you open up your camera on your phone, let me show you how cool this is, you just point your camera at the screen and it'll automatically open up a website uh, where you can fill it, giving you, give us, give us some uh, information, say what you would like back, and we'll make sure we get that to you. So, uh, Jeff, you had a question that came through. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, in t in terms of some of the tools that we hadn't shared um, in 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 my new world uh, with with the children around, uh, I wanted to share. There's a couple of apps, and we'll I think we're going to follow up with uh, a list of some of the apps that that we like. But Caribou. Uh, is an app that we will put the new kiddos in front of, which allows them to read a book or play a game with someone on the other side of the camera. Uh, so we'll put them, um, you know, with with a friend or a colleague, and they can read a book during some of. If my wife and I have conflicts with important meetings, um, and uh, one other tip that we had, which is kind of cool, is we actually set up a small desk next to our desk, and you know, kind of provided them a tablet, so it keeps their mind active. Uh, active and, and really uh, they kind of feel like they're working with us. So just a couple of things that uh, may be helpful as we kind of walk down this, Jonathan. Clearly Jeff is outsourcing his job to these kids, which is amazing. I think I just caught that there. Uh, that's great. Uh, if you can outsource your job to your kids, uh, some, of our, uh, some of our team members have been trying to find little things that their kids can do to bring them into the world of work, um, which I think is great. Um, paying your kids to make juice for you, uh, it's great. So we are up on time, but uh, I do want to say a big thank you for joining here today. Um, if you want to reach out, there's my contact details. I'll put you in touch with anyone on our team. We have uh, just shy of 100 salaried team members, 100% mobile around the country, um, working with companies all over, helping them with their hiring, recruitment, engagement, retention. Uh, we uh, love helping teams work well together so they're engaged better. They say dialed in their companies. We use platforms and software for that, which we, we implemented organizations. And then we also build pipelines and recruit for companies uh, with a very unique approach um, and uh, unique billing and cost approach. But uh, we're booming right now. So reach out. We, we are very excited to say that uh, we are here to help. And if we can serve you in any way, we'll do that. So thanks for all these uh, comments coming through. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure and a privilege to serve you guys, and we're here if you need us. Thanks a lot for joining. Stay in touch.